Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to be making a flower arrangement utilizing this beautiful antique low bowl that Leah from Washington sent out. We opened it either one or two mail times ago on our Garden Answer Highlights channel. Um, it's actually housed one bouquet before the one I'm gonna to make today. My mom, when she was here um, taking care of all of us after Samantha Grace was born, she made a really pretty kind of light pink and white arrangement that lasted forever. So I just cleaned this bowl out and I'm ready to make something new. So I thought I would just go through some of the steps and maybe do this process a little bit slower than I normally do. Maybe we won't speed, I don't know. Maybe we will speed up parts of it if it gets like kind of long. Um, but I thought I would go through some of the flowers I chose at the grocery store store today as well as some of the things I picked out of the garden and what I do to kind of prep the flowers to get the longest vase life possible. So of course you have your vessel, whatever it might be. I love bowls that are low like this. They're so fun to arrange in. And then for my frog, I use like lots of different things as a frog. You could use floral tape and you could make a grid on top of your um, bowl. So it just kind of like tapes over the side um, and that works really well. I'm going to be using this piece of chicken wire right here. I bought a roll of chicken wire years ago. What a great investment that has been because I cut little chunks of it off all the time. So all we're going to do is just kind of mold it into kind of a little, I don't know, shape that fits down inside this container. And what this will allow us to do is all the holes will allow the stems to go down, but then it'll help hold everything up. Um, and then occasionally I will use floral foam as well, like Oasis. Um, if it, my vessel is really, really shallow. So we're just gonna push it down in a little bit. My table is a little wobbly, so I can't put too much pressure on it. It doesn't have to go all the way down in the bowl because we won't really see it in the end anyway. So that's perfect right there. That is gonna be our frog. So the next thing we need is our water. And you want to make sure, well, first of all, you want to make sure your vessel is completely cleaned out. Um, if you have any dirtiness going on in there, it can create bacteria, which will uh, shorten the length of your uh, vase life on all your flowers dramatically. So start with a clean vessel. I'm starting with a clean piece of chicken wire, and then I have um, lukewarm water here that I've already mixed some floral preservative in. So this is it right here. Each one of these bundles of flowers comes with a packet of floral preservative attached to it. So I typically end up with a drawer full of these, like a little stockpile because I do buy cut flowers quite often. I like to have cut flowers in the house, especially in the winter months. Uh, but I don't need six of these packets for this arrangement. I already mixed three into this water right here. So um, like if I were to use them, I, I used them I already had, but um, at the end of today, I'll have six extra packets I can put back in my drawer. But you can get on Amazon and sometimes even at your local florist or your local garden center, they'll carry like little um, containers full of the floral preservative. So anyway, I'm just going to pour this water straight into our vessel. I don't want to get it all the way to the top. I'll leave a little bit of a lip so that I don't slosh anything out and I can always top it up later. So the first thing I'm going to do with the arrangement is create kind of a framework. Um, uh, typically I like to use evergreen branches or something that's just leafy. So the things that I picked from our garden today uh, are this bunch right here. This is Manhattan Euonymus. I have two pots full of this near our gazebo. Um, they've done excellent. I think they've been in those containers for at least two seasons and they produce these beautiful long stems with these bright green kind of glossy leaves. And then I also picked, these wouldn't fit on the table because I cut them long. You always want to cut stuff long if you can because you can't add stem back, but you can sure cut it off. But this is um, from our weeping willow in front of the greenhouse. And I thought, oh, how perfect to get some yellow branches incorporated in when I wanna do kind of a yellow and white arrangement. And then the one other thing I brought from inside, which I don't know if I'm gonna actually use, but the first year we lived in this house, I cut back some alliums that were in the back formal garden and I saved them. And they've just been sitting in this vase since then, looking really kind of neat and I thought this might be a really fun texture depending on how far I can get with these flowers. I didn't really buy a ton because a vessel like this with an opening this wide you can fit a lot of stuff in a vase this size so I might have to use these. So there's not a whole lot I do to prep branches like this except I do have my Felcos here and I'm going to remove the lower branches. You don't want to have any leaf um, material down in the water. So right here, we've created a new cut here toward the bottom. On woody stems, sometimes you can make, like you can crush the end or you can cut up the stem to create more area for the branch to suck water up. And then I'm just gonna start placing them in here and 
this can be a little bit squirrely. So be patient with yourself and with the branches. It can get frustrating sometimes. This is supposed to be a therapeutic thing to do. So look at that, that's really pretty. And I'm just gonna keep doing that with these branches and then we'll take a, yeah, I think we will speed this part up because it'll all be the same. So typically I'll create a framework that goes out one side and then maybe it's a little bit shorter on the other side. Kind of asymmetrical is what I typically like. idea what that looks like from the front it might look like a hot mess I'm not sure I might I have to climb under this table and take a look here every once in a while but like from the back what I can tell is I have a framework and it doesn't have to look perfect at this point especially if you're using chicken wire because these branches will shift when you put other things in and you'll have to kind of manipulate them as you go but you can see the basic structure is I've got something taller on this side and it kind of sweeps down and then out this side. And that's kind of what I like to go for. And then I've got a couple of accent branches over here. Okay, so now that the framework is kind of done, I'm gonna hold off on using the willow branches until probably I've got most all the flowers in here, just because I feel like they're gonna become more of an accent because they don't have a lot of weight. Um, while this Ioannis has a ton of weight and I think it's gonna be really a pretty uh, framework for all of these plants to sit on. So the next thing I'm going to use, typically I like to start with my biggest, boldest flowers first and give them their place and then fill in with the smaller stuff after that. So I'm gonna use these mums, which I, they only had three of them at the store. Let me get them out real quick. So with these mums, typically like if you're growing them out in your garden, you want to harvest them when just the outer petals have started to open. So they'll still be kind of in bud stage. Um, if you need to, like with this one, since I bought it at the grocery store, they're clearly, they've been open for a while. You may need to clean some of these outer petals off. Um, like these are a little bit spent and I want to make the flower look a little bit better. So that looks pretty good right there. And then you do want to strip all the leaves off of these, all of them. Uh, we want all the energy going to keeping this little bloom alive right here. Um, and then what we want to do is make a fresh cut. And I think I'm going to kind of pop this one right in the front here. So I don't need it to be very tall. So we'll do a slanted cut and we'll just pop it right in the water. And definitely for these, they do like to have a floral preservative. It does help uh, lengthen their life. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two. I've gotta decide where I want them to go first. Strip all the leaves off. And I think I want this one to be about right here. Slanted cut right into the water. And then our third, I'm gonna put somewhere in here. Strip the leaves. This one I'm gonna keep a little bit longer at first because I'm not sure, yeah. I think that's how I want it. So this is the next flower I'm gonna use, the light yellow Alstromerias. Let me get them out of the plastic. In fact, I should just remove all the plastic from these flowers, just really quick, hold on. So on the packaging, it said that the variety name was Voyager. And I think this is such a beautiful color of Alstromeria. And they've always got such beautiful detail inside and they last forever, like at least one to two weeks in a vase. What you do wanna make sure to do is strip any lower leaves that may touch water uh, because that can cause bacteria issues and we don't want that. Um, and uh, do a slanted cut like we did with the mum and put it in lukewarm water which is what we've got going on. So what I'm gonna do for this arrangement is I'm probably gonna tuck in a stem right in the front and then I'm gonna use this because it's kind of fluffy on the top as kind of a filler in the middle here. Um, and I'll tuck some in around the back here. So let me just do that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stems of this. So we'll do our slanted cut. I'm gonna reach around the front and tuck it in. That may need adjusting once I can see it from the front. All right, so next I'm gonna be utilizing these roses. These are uh, called vanilla on the package. Beautiful, kind of a creamy white color. Um, so for roses, what we wanna do is we wanna use lukewarm water with preservative, so that's perfect. We wanna remove all of the lower leaves like this. And then we wanna remove the, any uh, thorns, if there are thorns, but these don't have any. Um, and then we're gonna remove the guard petals. So we're gonna remove the outer petals here, 
that are kind of protecting the inside. You can remove the sepals too if you want to, but that's unnecessary really. And then to make these look a little bit more elevated, like a little more open, what you can do is you can introduce the uh, freshly cut stems when you get them home into lukewarm water, even if you're not ready to arrange with them, and that will help them open up a lot faster. Use cooler water if you want them to stay a little bit more uh, closed. But what you can do if they're still tight like this is you can gently take a petal and you can bend it outward. And we're just going to gently do that to the, all of the petals here. If one of them bends weird or breaks off, it's no big deal. There's a lot of petals here. And this will just create a more fluffy, open looking rose. You can take your fingers too and you can kind of get them in there and gently open the bloom. And you can blow on it too. <sighs> that will help kind of open the center of the bloom a little bit. Okay, so take a look at this rose versus what it kind of looked like to start out with. So that's a side view, straight on view. Isn't that crazy, the difference? Okay, now we're gonna make an angled cut and I'm going to pop this in somewhere in here. Right in here. Okay, now I'm gonna to continue to do that. I don't know that I'm gonna use all of these. I bought a dozen. Um, I might only need six or so in this arrangement because when you do fluff them out, they stretch a lot further because they become a much bulkier flower. I want to use these beautiful white snapdragons next and typically I grew a lot of snapdragons in our cut flower garden last year and you want to harvest them when the bottom just few blooms are open but the rest of them haven't opened yet so this is pretty nice because we should get quite a long vase life out of this one you do want to use floral preservative that does help with this particular type of plant we're going to remove the lower leaves. And usually I wanna say you get seven to 10 days out of one of these flowers. And I love these because of the movement that they bring to an arrangement. So we can kind of work these in as taller elements, like maybe some right in here, uh, maybe out to the sides. I only have four, so I've got to be choosy about where I put these, but we'll do a slanted cut. And I think we're gonna pop this one right in here. Isn't that gorgeous right there? I love it. All right, let me place the other three. So we're gonna place these Gerbera daisies next. They are looking okay. Um, there's a couple of them that have a little bit of damage on the petals, but I don't think that that's gonna matter too much. Um, so with these, you can get up to two weeks of vase life out of these. What you wanna make sure to do is, uh, these are nice because they have a very, very long stem, uh, but you wanna make sure to cut them at minimum two inches from their previous cut. Um, and you wanna do it under water or get them in water as quickly as possible because air can block the um, water vessels of the stem and it can, take, or it can keep the stem from drinking up water. So I'm going to, let's see, I don't have quite enough water in here to cut it underneath water. So I know exactly where I'm gonna place this. I'm just gonna cut and pop it in and hope for the best. <laughs> Next one's gonna go here. A little bit more off that one. Okay, so the next thing I want to add are a couple of limes that actually fell off of my lime tree because I think I let it get a little bit too cold up here, but I held on to them. I've got them right here. And I think that they, well, they look like lemons, not limes at this point, um, but they smell really good. And I think that they'll look pretty incorporated. So what I'm gonna do is use one of the uh, spent rose stems that I cut off from one of these roses. And you just cut a, an angled cut like this. And you grab your citrus fruit and stab it. Maybe, hold on. You gotta get a good strong stem to do this. There we go, just like that. 
And then we can pop it in wherever we feel like we want a little spot of color like that. This one, let's say we put it right here. That way we have a way to utilize these fruit too because we, you know, spend a long time trying to get these fruit to ripen and grow. Um, and then I might use maybe one more and then we'll save one to put on the table next to the arrangement. You find a stem. This one looks good. Hold on, rogue lime. Run away. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Okay, now the very last flower I have here is some baby's breath. And these are a little bit more open than I would like. Typically you wanna cut these when like two thirds to a half, a half of the blooms are open. All of the blooms are open on these. And after um, they've all opened, you usually get like a week base life out of them. And I can see that some of these are already starting to dry just a little bit. And they don't look bad dried, but I'm not sure that I wanna use a ton of these. If the blooms are drooping, you can sear the stems in boiling water. Um, so you can cut the end, pop it in boiling water for a few seconds, and that will help uh, lengthen the life of the blooms. So we're just gonna cut a few of these and just let them be a little bit of an, a fluffy accent here. Now, the question is, do we wanna add more? I don't think we need to, uh, but I do have these willow branches. So I might tuck a few in just to see what they look like. Uh, and we may or may not leave them in, but I brought them up. So I'm just going to try it and then take them out probably. Okay, Aaron, Aaron says no, <laughs> Aaron thinks no. Okay, so I think that we're gonna skip the willow branches. I think Erin is right, less is more in this case, although there's a lot going on in this arrangement right here. I am really pleased with how it came out because I kind of knew I wanted to use this low bowl, but I know that the opening is so big that I thought maybe I didn't bring home enough stuff to use in it to make it really full and kind of lush looking. But when you can head out into your garden and pick a few branches as filler, that's always really, really helpful. And I hope it was helpful to see this process in a little bit more detail. Typically when we do a flower arrangement, we speed it up um, to where you really can't see a lot of detail. Um, but you know, from the choice of the vase to what we use as a frog, and then kind of how I build my arrangements, and that's kind of how I attack each one of them. Um, I always start with my structure, kind of a um, framework, if you will, for your arrangement. And then you build from there, utilizing big blooms first and then working your way to all the filler stuff. So, um, and then also it's, it's a kind of a learning curve, especially once we started the cut flower garden this last year to learn when to harvest each type of bloom, at what stage, um, how to treat each one of the um, stems so that you get the longest vase li life. And I'm still learning those things too. Um, so anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye. What are you doing? <laughs> Kind of undignified? <laughs> no. I'll do whatever it takes, man. <laughs>